Okay, hey, morning. Uh, sorry, good afternoon. Let's start the lecture. So we're gonna do. We're gonna finish this uh, static feed or virtual material first. Okay, and then we'll summarize uh, based on what we learned for the static loading, and then uh, we'll have a uh, slight new topic, which is called stress concentration. Okay. And if you've got time, I'll show you uh, uh, some uh, FEA element analysis using SOLIDWORKS. Okay, yeah. So let's finish this uh, static video printer material first. Okay, and we mentioned in the previous lecture we're basically going to cover three different theory. Uh, number one is the maximum normal stress. Okay, so we covered that in the previous lecture. Okay, so all this one does is Essentially, you have sigma one, okay, greater than sigma two, greater than sigma three. The three principal stresses. So M in S is M in S says, as long as okay one of them exceeds the strengths, then you have a failure. So basically, either this greater than that, or okay, or this three less than this. Right, so that's the failure. Okay. So ultimately, what you do is you basically compare. Okay, you basically compare and look at the location of this mole circle. So the mole circle could be here or here, could be anywhere, right? And uh, based on the location of the mole circle. Okay, then you can then you can uh, look at the failure or not. So the mole circle could be here, could also be here. Okay. It could also be here. Right? Yeah. Okay. So that's three different cases we've been talking about. And uh, overall, uh, then we draw, we can draw a failure boundary, okay, so we can draw a failure boundary based on the uh, findings. So for MNS theory, the boundary essentially is a rectangle box, okay, it's a rectangle box. Or maybe it's just this is a square. So this is S U T, this is S U C. Okay, so anywhere inside the box is considered to be safe. Okay. Yeah. So that's M in S. And then the next one here, what we say is the BCM, the Brittle Coulomb Mode Theory. So we started a theory, and we said the reason that this uh, Coulomb, okay, or mode, come up with this Coulomb mode circle is basically based on the observation. Uh, when you look at the red circle, or the, the or the case that basically when when uh, when one principle is negative, one principle is positive, then Apparently, the according to the MNS, okay, it's not going to be considered uh, failure, okay, as long as this circle is sandwiched between this SUT and negative SUC. But, okay, it could, this circle could get pretty big, right? 
inside these two boundaries. Okay, basically one boundary is here, and the other boundary is over here. Okay, so the circle could get pretty big. And that circle is getting big basically means you have a fairly large shear stress, maximum shear stress, okay, from the move circle. But this MAS doesn't consider that. And where is that? That's basically this region here, right? And this region. For this region, it's when sigma A is greater than zero, greater than sigma B, right? This uh, the fourth quadrant over here. Okay? So then this BCM at here essentially trying to modify or to change that part of this uh, uh, the uh, the situation. So in short, what what he was trying to do is. Okay, so he's, he's saying is, uh, hey, you do one tensile test, okay, you do one tensile test, and uh, this circle corresponding to the, uh, to the, to the, to the circle when the specimen is at the yield. Then you do another one, okay, uh, due to this compressive test, okay, yeah. So this circle corresponding to the circle, okay, when the, uh, specimen is at yield. Then he, what he do, does is he try to create a safe boundary by connecting the tangent, basically <coughs> tangent point between the two circles. Okay, so you create you create a tangent line here, and it's going to treat okay this basically as a sort of the boundary or the maximum. Uh, lines that guards this against this failure. So then, the next thing what he do is, okay. So now you started to do, uh, uh, you started to do in a, a certain kind of a test, or you started to have a certain actual situation. So in the actual situation, you will have a mole circle, right? You will have a mole circle. Okay. Yeah. So then this is probably the mole circle uh, drawn according to the actual loading condition. And the, the, who knows? Maybe the circles here, maybe circles there. But the BCM thing is, okay, you consider the failure occurs when this circle becomes tangent to this line here. We call this line as BD. So we consider ourselves uh, having a failure when the mole circle is tangent to this BD line. Okay, so that's basically the modification for this quadrant at here. All right, yeah. So when it's tangent, then that circle basically will be uh, over somewhere here, right? For example, okay, yeah. So if it's uh, if if that circle here, so basically you, you you need to look at how the circle is drawn, but it has to be tangent. You consider that situation as a failure, all right? Yeah. So if that's the basically the extreme case here, tangent then what constitutes that extreme case, right? Yeah. So then you can derive that. So you, if you look at the lecture notes, I have uh, uh, using, uh, using geometry is basically to derive this, uh, uh, the, situ the conditions when they become tangent. So in short, okay, when it becomes tangent, okay, so the condition what we have is, okay, okay, so in tangent, the condition what we have is sigma a over s u t minus sigma b over s u c equal to one. That's the condition. All right? Yeah. Okay. So what is sigma a, sigma b? If you recall that, that's basically uh, the the two principal normal stresses. Right on the two sides of the mole circle. Was that okay? Yeah. So I'm skipping myself a little derivation here, where this is from. But if you look at the lecture notes, it's just fairly straightforward the geometry is okay. High school stuff. Okay. There's nothing uh, mystery there. Okay. So in other words, okay. Then if this is the boundary, okay, corresponding to this BCM condition here, okay, this con BCM condition, then the BCM can be modified just slightly here. Okay, if we modify this uh, M in S, okay, this is sigma B, this is sigma A. There's nothing changed in the first quadrant. Okay. 
still the same thing. Okay. As there's no change in the third quadrant at here. Okay. Sorry. Not this portion. Okay. However, there is a change in the fourth quadrant in here, and that's this line here. And this line, okay, if you extend that line, this line here is basically the line that we just find it over here. That's the boundary. Okay, that's basically this line. Okay, yeah, yeah this line. Um, If you look at your uh, handouts, then you have a better drawing than this one here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you can finish the other side similarly. So that gives you a sort of like a hexagon here, right? Yeah. But it's more of a, a narrow one side, a little wider on the other side. Okay. Slightly different look from the uh, the maximum shear stress theory. Okay, so that's BCM. Okay, that's BCM. Oops. So if I give you a simple example of it here, let me see if I think I remember I have one example of it here. Yeah, just one simple example. Let's look at this one here. So, by the way, and there's nothing changed over here, here, okay? The only criteria change is this portion right here, okay? Is this portion for the BCM, Brito Coulomb mode. So let's take a look at this simple example here. Let's see, we have a bar. Okay, and the bar is subjected to a torsion, uh, torsional loading, T. If this is the X axis, and this is the, t the y, and this is the z-axis. Okay. Yeah. We have a diameter, okay. and d equal 0 0.95 inch. Okay. And this is a cast iron, so that's a brittle material. And SUT is 31 PSI, SUC 109 PSI. Yeah, by the way, uh, when you do assignments or later when you do anything, okay, uh, generally the, the textbook uh, give a pretty <coughs> decent uh, tables, you know, uh, with all the material properties. So I would uh, uh, recommend that you use, we all use the same numbers, okay, from the table instead of a uh, Google for uh, some other resources because there there may be some slight uh, uh, differences okay from uh, different sources yeah okay so this is a number we have here so let's take a look at uh, um, the safety factor okay uh, actually what's the oh yeah the question is uh, for given n equal to one Right for n equal to one. So what is the what is the maximum torque that you could apply to this bar before failure occurs? Okay. Yeah. All right. So the the loading condition is fairly simple because there's nothing else but the torque. And um, we know that if I cut a cross section anywhere, okay, along the bar, and there's always a torsional loading on that cross section, right? So there's always a torsional loading along that cross section. If you're looking at it from the positive x axis, that's the loading condition. And then if you take anywhere, okay, on the edges of this cross section, that's where the maximum torsional shear stress is, and that value. Right is always tau equal to T R over J. 
right? So T is uh, not doesn't know, but uh, so let's keep it. We know the diameter, and G is the polar moment of inertia. So uh, that we know, okay? So keep the T as it is, okay? And G is pi d four over thirty two. So d is 0 0.95. Substitute the d into this expression and uh, do a little simplification. That's approximately 5.9 t. Okay. So uh, basically, the shear stress, right, at for this bar is is uh, 5.9 multiplied by the applied torque. Okay. So the rod is under pure t uh, shear. If it's under pure shear, it doesn't really matter where you take it. If you take a stress element, okay, and uh, basically you have, okay, without drawing very specifically, maybe the direction the other way, but doesn't matter. So the stress element is going to be under pure shear, right? Under, under pure shear. If it's under pure shear, what does this Mole circle look like so the Mohs circle is always like this, right? Also like this, and you guarantee that your sigma a and sigma b. That what's the relationship? Sigma a is always greater than zero, and sigma b is always less than zero. And then of course the absolute value of these two are the same, right? Not the same. So in other words, and uh, where we're we looking at, the loading condition must be within this quadrant at here. Right, must be in this quadrant. Okay, yeah. So if we want to calculate uh, the safety factor, or you know, here is not a calculating safety factor. Here is a calculate the torque. So what we're going to use is we're going to use this. This is the basically the boundary here, right? This is the boundary. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if that's the boundary, <coughs> then What's if I introduce the general okay, formula in terms of the safety factor? Okay, the boundary is one, right? The boundary is one, and if you uh, if you consider a safety factor, then it's going to be one over n. Okay, it's going to be one over n. So this is your essentially this is your design equation. Okay, your design equation. Okay, or in other words. This is n equal to what? One divided by this whole chunk at here. Okay, this whole chunk. Okay, so now in this question, what's the safety factor is given? Safety factor n is required. It's one, right? It's one. So in this case, n is one. So we take n is maybe some other cases n equal to two knows, right? Yeah. Now, now we know S U T, we know S U C, so we can substitute the values here, and we also I uh, need to calculate sigma a and sigma b. So for this particular case, if this is pure shear, where is the tau? This is tau here, right? So which means my sigma a will be how much? How much is sigma a? And how much is sigma b? Okay, sigma b is must be negative. They give you sigma a, right? Come on, guys. Anybody? 5.9. Yeah. <coughs> Seriously, is it is it you just don't want to answer me, or you 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 don't you don't really know? Okay, I'll take it. You don't want to answer me here. Okay. <coughs> so now the next question is substitute this value into this design equation, right, into this design equation. So and then uh, once we do that, so what do we have? So 5.9t SUT, which is 31. And uh, negative 5.9t over 101 SUC, and equal to 1. So one equation, one unknown. And solve for the t, right? Solve for the t. So t will be the maximum torque you can apply, and that should be, yeah. Uh, I guess original, 
original unit here is KSI, right? It's KSI. So rule of thumb is if you're not too sure, you should always convert everything into the standard unit. So if it's converted, then you 10 to the power of 3, that means you converted that to the standard unit, right? Okay. Uh, if you don't want to convert it to the standard unit, then you, sh you should bear in mind what's, what's, what's the uh, unit coming out of here. But anyway, if you uh, convert to this uh, standard unit and uh, calculate the T, and that's equal to 4096 okay, pound force okay, inch. Okay. Yeah. See, that's it. That's the, uh, the answer out of here. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, this is BCL. Okay. All right. So second, uh, second, second theorem. That's it. Right. Second theorem is just bear in mind what the second theorem is dealing with. Second theorem is trying to modify the force quadrant or trying to basically take the sh the value of the shear stress into consideration. Okay, that's the second theorem. So the the third one is called modified mo. Okay. Okay. Modified mode theory. So let's 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 take a look at the second thing here before we talk. Give you what the modified mode theory is. Okay. Now, let me go back to this drawing for the uh, BCM over here. Okay, for the BCM. So BCM modified this force quadrant by essentially geometrically speaking by using a, a straight line connecting from this point to this point instead of uh, this, right, as the MAS. And then this modified mode, what happens is uh, people notice, okay, that in a, in actual situation, within this quadrant, okay, within this quadrant, when the tensile stress is a dominant, basically in tensile dominant situation, okay, it, it, it mostly feel due to the normal stress. Okay, so that's one uh, phenomenon people notice this. So let me write down here. Okay, let's, let's and then I'll explain this uh, uh, what this mean and here. Okay, yeah. So experiments show. Okay. In tensile stress dominant yeah, more precise is uneven burrito material, but th this is exactly where we be where we're dealing with. We're dealing with uneven burrito material, all right? Yeah. So failure is due to tensile stress only. Okay, yeah. So BCM is trying to basically take the shear stress into the consideration. However, Okay, the experiments show that in tensile stress dominant situation, okay, the failure is mainly due to this tensile stress only. So basically, which means is the shear stress, it's not a concern when tensile stress dominant. Okay, when tensile stress dominant. Now, if you look at the drawing that we had here, right? So this quadrant is sigma A greater than sigma B greater than zero, right? Greater than zero. So both of these things are greater than zero. So greater than zero basically means they are what? Tensile stress, right? They're tensile stress. So this this is a tensile stress dominant. There's nothing to see that. And, and, and it's what? It's due to tensile stress, right? And the failure due to this normal stress at here. And, but in this quadrant at here, and we have to basically separate this quadrant again according to this experiment's phenomena. So on this, in the, in the, under this coordinate here, where would, where shall we see that this is going to be a tensile stress 
dominant situation then. Right? So this quadrant is sigma a greater than zero greater than sigma b, right? Greater than sigma b. So if I draw this one here, so let's draw this one here. So there's nothing to see now. This quadrant, okay, so naturally the tensile stress dominant quadrant. Okay, but under this one here, we got to be careful here. Overall, this quadrant is sigma a greater than zero greater than sigma b. Okay, so overall, okay. So where exactly under this quadrant, where exactly is the tensile strain the stress dominant location? So wh which one is tensile? And when you have this one here, when's the, which one is tensile? Which one is compressive? This is tensile, this is compressive, right? If we're we're seeing the tensile stress dominant, basically we're we're seeing is what we're we talking about. So for tensile dominant, so basically this tells us the absolute value of this A needs to be what? Exactly, right? Greater than this. That's what we need tensile stress dominant, right? Yeah. So then at this location or at this in within this quadrant here, now where exactly is this absolute value sigma A greater than absolute value sigma B? So if you draw another 45 degree line at here, right? Another 45 degree line at here, where exactly? over here right this portion okay this portion here okay so basically for this portion out of here basically this portion it's absolute sigma a greater and absolute sigma b okay this portion okay now if this is the portion satisfied this tensile dominant and experiment shows that the failure is mainly due to the normal stress or the tensile stress then there is no need to modify the failure theory. So you can simply extend the failure theory line from here to here. Is that right? And what's this line? What's this point here? That's SUT, right? That's SUT. So in the first quadrant, that's essentially the failure theory, the same as maximum normal theory. So what, you, what, what, it, what it means is, as long as your uh, sigma is greater than SUT, you have failure, right? Yeah. And now, based on this experiment uh, phenomena, uh, in tensile stress dominant situation, you still have this, this basic failure mainly due to the normal stress. And uh, so that means, okay, you don't need to modify this failure theory. You can just simply extend it over here. But okay, anywhere okay below this line, dashed line right here, this portion that's sigma a less than sigma b. That's not the tensile dominant anymore. So this portion is compressive dominant, right? Dominant. So for this portion, and uh, so the modified mode basically what I'm saying is okay. So then I am not gonna touch this brittle mode anymore. So he's saying is so let's connect these two lines at right here, okay? Yeah. So this is basically the modification okay, uh, coming from this modified mode theory, the MM theory. Okay. Yeah. Is that clear? So there's no, there's not much mathematics here. It's purely uh, based on the experiment uh, results, and then the the modified the failure theory. Uh, trying to fit the the data, okay, in a much better uh, fashion, okay. So and then there is no change over here, okay. So this this is only change in here, and if you finish the circle, now how do I finish the circle? Yeah. Uh, uh, 
Uh, so anyway, you don't have to finish the circle. No, half of that's good. Is that good? Okay. So if yeah, I finish the circle, it would be it would be like this, right? Yeah. This is, the drawing is a little bit out of proportion there. So that's our safe region. Okay. So the question here is if I if I want a mathematical expression for this little portion at here, right? So you can easily derive a straight line equation for this portion. Okay. So for that portion of straight line, and uh, what would be the straight line equation? If you derive the straight line equation for that portion, so that would be this one. Okay. I'm not sure. Do I have that? Do I have that on the in the in the summary. So this line here is SUC minus SUT sigma A over SUC SUT minus sigma B over SUC equal to 1. So that's the line for this one here. Okay? Yeah. Just double check. Yeah. Here we have that in the in in our diagram in the handout, okay, yeah, is that clear? Yeah, so so far that's a three theorem. Okay, that's a three theorem. Okay, you want to design, and you're gonna have to take a look. You have to, you're gonna have to look at the location of your stress element or the state of stress, right? And then you can try, and then you can try to find a safety factor, okay, based on the design equation. Yeah, so your best bet. This this is this is a sort of your formula. So you can bring it into the midterm. Um, and uh, if you don't remember, the last page number page number four right here has a summary of all the design equations. Okay. Yeah. This one, this is a table I was talking about. Brittle material, that's the table, right? Three different theorem. And uh, the, the little complicated one is probably the modified mole here, but uh, don't be uh, scared by this expression. And all it does is basically just separate the, f the force quadrant into two different situations, right? And the separation is due to this dominant stress, um, dominant stress uh, phenomena, okay? Okay, all good. All right. Uh, just a little summary, and this is a sort of the drawing to put every uh, to put every um, theories together, right? So a simple question right here: If I give you multiple choice, considering the feeder theory for brittle material, MM, PCM, and MNS, which one is more conservative? PCM, yeah. Anybody doesn't want doesn't agree with this? PCM is more conservative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You better agree. So uh, that's PCM. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. That's basically the uh, all the feeder theories. Okay. For uh, different uh, material. So that's in the end. Let's take a look at the one example right here. Okay. Take a look at one example. So this is just a purely calculation example right here. So I'll give you a state of stress. We always deal with planner. Uh, state of stress. So here is the state of stress. Okay, so sigma x equal to this and tau xy equal to this. So let's suppose that we're working on a brittle material, right? <coughs> and we wanted to check the safety factor for this brittle material under uh, giving this kind of state of stress. So let's calculate 
this uh, state of, uh, the safety factor using all three uh, theorems. Okay, all three theorems. So there are different ways of calculating it, but uh, if you look at your your table right here. Uh, I guess what I need is I need to have sigma a and a sigma b, right, in order to calculate this safety factor. See the safety factor here. All right? Yeah. So we need to calculate the sigma a, sigma b. And that's pretty straightforward formula. Okay. So calculate it. It's approximately four, not approximately, it's actually exactly. It's exactly this four and negative sixteen. There we go. So this is basically giving you the state of stress or the location of the state of stress. So here's the diagram here, and the location of the state of stress, and apparently one is positive, one is negative. It must be in this quadrant here. Okay, right in this quadrant. So where exactly is it? And that has that really depends on these two values here, right? Uh, I guess I didn't give you S U T S U C yet. S U T will be yeah the same same uh, material as as the previous example. Okay, same material. So S U T is 31. S U C is 101 K S I. 30. Sorry, actually 30. I'm using 31 here. Just a second. Yeah, let's use a 31. Okay, so now let's try the different theorem. First, MNS. Okay, MNS. Okay, so MNS, its boundary is this, right? The boundary is this. So, in other words, Whenever your sigma a is greater than S U T, you have a failure, right? You have a failure. However, where are we? We're within this quadrant here. So we, we have to check two safety factors. So one is compare sigma a with S U T. The other is compare what? This negative S U C with sigma b, right? So this is actually, if you look at the table, this is why we need to calculate this mean value between S U T over sigma A and S negative S U C over sigma B. Because the particular location of this state of stress. Okay. Plug in all the values and that's approximately okay. it's actually gonna be turn out to be uh, this value here. Okay, turn out to be this value. Okay. So 109, is it 109 or 101? Yeah, 109, sorry. Over sigma B16, which is 6.81. Okay. So it turned out to be that. So as a matter of fact, okay, if I see that, if I see that this n is taken from here, then actually, where will be the location? If I draw, if I separate, if I separate to this over here, okay, if I separate it here, where do you where do you think the location of this state of stress is? Is it somewhere here or somewhere here? Lower, right? Yeah. So if it's greater than one safety factor, so it must be over here, right? It must be here. Well, we don't know what the what the value is according to that yet, so uh, this may not be right, okay? But it's going to be somewhere there. Okay. BCM. Okay. So if you look at your uh, uh, your your feeder theory. So it, for that fourth quadrant, the BCM safety factor calculation, it's this formula. Okay, it's this formula, and you calculate the n here. So that's 
Okay, that's quite different from M in S, right? Quite different. And M M theory, modify mode theory. Okay, modify mode theory. So this is where you got to be careful here. Okay, when you apply modify mode theory, particularly what we have is a state of stress in the fourth quadrant. Okay, in the fourth quadrant. So the question is where what where exactly are basically you have here here right you have these two okay you have these two so essentially which one are you going to use are you going to use this one or are you going to use this one to do the calculation and that depends on what depends on this here right depends on this okay so you look at this you look at this case here what is the sigma a is 4 what's the sigma b is negative 16 so that apparently is that a still dominant? Uh, is that uh, uh, is that a tensile stress dominant for this case? What's going on here? Yeah. So sigma a absolute value is four. Sigma b absolute value is sixteen. So it's less than sixteen. So this is not a tensile stress dominant, right? Not a tensile stress dominant. If it is not, then we're looking for is for at it's this one here. Okay, it's this. All right. Okay. So I need to ca uh, calculate the angle according to this formula. Okay, so calculate the n according to that formula. Okay, so n is actually one over a pretty big expression here, right? S U C minus S U T over S U C S U T. Okay, sigma a minus sigma b over S U C. Okay, plugging all the values, this turned out to be 4.2. So the number, uh, this seems right because BCM gave us the smallest number for the safety factor. And that's why we see this is a conservative, right? The most conservative one. Okay. So direct application of the theories, that's all about it, right? You have the, you have the table there in the all you need to do is which one you should apply. And how do you apply? You just have to look at uh, where this state of stress is, or the stress, uh, stress elements, right? Okay. All right. And uh, in the previous lecture, we had an example, um, the raw thing, right, with the torque. It was a force at the one end. So we analyzed that situation. And I don't think I need to go over that example again. So this example here, uh, no, not here. So let me just quickly show you what it is, right? And uh, it's really nothing tricky out of here. So the same, basically the same system, the same kind of loading, right? The same kind of loading, the same dimension, everything's the same except that we just consider a different material okay in the previous lecture we consider it's a, a steel right it's a ductile in this question we consider it's a brittle material right then uh, if we wanted to analyze or uh, the stress at a and b and to look at whether you have uh okay so actually there is a mistake here that should be a brittle okay yeah so if we want to analyze this location A and B, see if they're fitty or not, right? The calculating calculation of the stress, no change, right? Because the loading condition is the same, dimension is the same. So calculation of the stress, it's exactly the same thing, right? Once you get to the stress, but you, you're going to have to apply a different fitty theories, right? Depends on the value of the stress. Is that good? Okay. So this is why I'm not going to do this calculation anymore. Uh, stress is exactly the same kind of stress as before. You end up the principal stress for the A, for the, this is A location, I believe. Yeah, at the A location, you end up this, one is positive, one is negative. 
Then how do I calculate the safety factor? That's, that's basically the same procedure as we just gone through, right? For that, uh, for for this, uh, for the simple, for this example right here. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the key point, I guess, is two things. One is um, giving a system, right? How do you obtain exactly the uh, precisely the state of stress at a certain location? And then, how would you apply the failure theory properly to get the safety factor? Okay. If it's a design question, then it's the, the other way around. Basically, a uh, given safety factor, okay, uh, calculate maybe the, the shaft diameter or the length, right, or the cross section dimension, who knows, right, and uh, or maybe the maximum force of torque that you could apply to the system. So that's basically what we call design kind of question. Okay. All good? Yeah. So let's move on to uh, to the uh, next topic. Okay. Uh, essentially, what we what we finish off of here is we finish this static loading condition. But before we move on to the next topic, essentially the next, will be the next lecture, which is called fatigue loading. There is one small topic called stress concentration. Okay, stress concentration. So I think you probably have learned a little bit uh, about this stress concentration. So let me let me show you this diagram here. Okay, this is taken from the tax your textbook. Now. If you subject the bar okay, to, uh, let's say, tensile force or stress, if this bar, it's geometrically, it's not an even bar. Okay, So this is what we call, there is a geom geometry sudden change along the bar. Right? So this is even, even, even. All of a sudden, there is a hole in the middle of the bar. Here is the same thing. There's even, even. All of a sudden, there are two fillets. Okay? Showing up at here, so the geometry, geometrically, it's not even. There is a sudden change of geometry along this bar at here. So then, in particular, looking at this, okay, irregularity location, the distribution of the stress, it's not even. Okay, basically, it's not evenly distributed across this section at here. Okay, for example, not. Not even cross section and here, not even a cross section and here. And uh, what's uh, more more interesting is, for example, when you cut a cross section here, there is a maximum. There's a larger stress at this top edge and the bottom edge here. And for this kind of fillet, there's higher stress over here and here. Okay, yeah. So that's basically. Uh, the phenomena that people noticed okay, due to this change of geometry. Okay. Yeah. This is actually quite, uh, uh, quite, quite uh, important, okay? Because uh, the change of geometry is very much of interesting things a lot of time to designers, right? And particularly for first-time designers, and you wanted to look at uh, fancy, look at it beautiful, you know. In the end, you say, "I'm going to stamp a name on it," you know. Right, and beautiful name of stamp. So what happens is when you do that, right, you cause the geometry uh, discontinuity. Okay, yeah, it looks good now, but this geometry discontinuity will give rise this stress concentration. Okay, and the stress concentration, just simply look at it. I mean, it's not good because why? Because it used to be this much, but now you have a bigger, right? And uh, of course, you don't want a bigger stress. Okay. You want a bigger stress, and that means uh, you have you will have a, a higher chance of a failure. That makes sense, right? So that's basically uh, the, the 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 bad thing about the geometry discontinuity, or the bad thing about the stress concentration. Okay. So as a as a uh, designer, you try to uh, you wanted to avoid that. However, you know there's a lot of situation you can avoid it. For example, you need a fillet, right? Yeah. So you can't avoid this. I mean, you need a, you need a hole for a bot, so that can be avoided. So if it cannot be avoided, then all you can do is when you design it, you have to design against this stress concentration. Make sense, right? So in other words, 
when you design, you don't design according to the nominal stress at here. You have to design against the stress, maximum stress over here, right? So that's the idea. Okay. Yeah. So stress concentration. So what we do is we introduce so-called stress concentration factor. Okay. Stress concentration factor. So I'm going to use two different symbols. One is KT, the other KTS. Okay, KTS. So KT is going to be the factor used on the tensile, and KTS is going to be the factor used on the shear stress. Okay, yeah. So the way to apply this stress concentration factor is this. So your sigma, maybe your uh, nominal one is sigma naught. So if you have a cross section, the nominal one is probably P over A right p over a okay then what you do is you apply the stress concentration factor to the nominal value to increase the nominal value so that gives you this sigma here so we call it sigma max but you got to be careful this is not necessarily the actual max normal stress right yeah so and for this one here, let's see, we end up with another one here, which is KTS and tau uh, nominal. Okay. So that's how you apply the stress constraint factor. Okay. So this is for okay, uh, normal stress or tensile or compressive tube. And this is for shear. Okay, for sure. Okay, so that's as simple as this. All right. So then, then your question probably is, okay, so where, how how do I find the KT KTS? So KT KTS, we don't need to worry about that. We have a fairly uh, a detailed tables and figures at the disposal to look up for the KT and the KTS. Okay, uh, based on the specific loading, the specific kind of uh, geometry. So we can use the tables to figure to figure it out. Okay, so those are all in the appendix. So I'm going to give you an example to, to demonstrate that. So KT, KTS is there. Okay, so it's already obtained. However, uh, there is one very, very, very important thing out of here I have to uh, go over before we uh, demonstrate how to use KT and KTS. Okay, so let me write down the 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 thing that I wanted to emphasize that here are the uh, the so so called important things here. Now remember what we're doing is here is a static loading uh, condition, right? Static loading condition. So then, for ductile material, okay, for ductile material, okay, we do not use stress concentration factor. Okay, yeah. For ductile material under static loading, okay, we do not, okay, very important, do not, okay, yeah, not to do. Consider KT or KTS. Basically, we don't consider stress concentration. I'll, I'll kind of explain this a little bit here, okay? But uh, no matter what, okay, this this is one thing that you have to remember, okay? Yeah. But for brittle material, okay, for brittle material, more precisely for uneven material, brittle material. But anyway, for brittle materials, okay, we okay we use KT or KTS, okay, always. Okay, yeah. So that's the difference, right? For brittle material under, I'm more precise, under static loading. So now you got to trust me, if I say this is important and uh, 100% chances that I will test you this kind of knowledge point in the exam. Okay? Yeah. So so what chances what happens is 
and uh, I'll give you a lo uh, give you certain loading conditions, certain question, and then uh, give you the KTKTS. Okay, I'll give you the diagram for KTKTS, right? And then ask you the safety factor. So you started calculate, you started do everything, right? You you do this, and you get a safety factor. And but you didn't see, oh, that's a brittle. Uh, sorry, uh, that's a ductile material actually. So sorry, you got it wrong. So <laughs> this is the the uh, the reason I'm listing this one here. Okay, yeah. Why is it that you don't need to do it first? Yeah. So here's a short reason as to why here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the reason more of it uh, should be explained okay, based on the stress and strain uh, curve. For brittle material, the stress strain curve maybe more look like this, right? Yeah. And for ductile material, it's uh, sorry. So for brittle material, it's this, and for brittle material, more of this. So it's fractures there. Okay. Yeah. So what which means is okay. And when you have, a, let's let's say, uh, for a little more short shortened simplification, let's say you have a ductile material, and uh, here's a fillet, okay? Right, here's a fillet. So which means there will be a stress concentration. If this is a geometry, there will be a stress concentration for sure. Okay? Right? Yeah. So maybe the KT is under, let's say, under a certain kind of a, a tensile force. Right? Yeah. Okay. So if the nominal one is sigma naught, then your KT by sig sigma naught is going to be the stress felt at this location here, right? At this location. Okay. Then if you look at it, look at it in the stress strain curve, okay, so maybe your sigma naught is over here, right? And your KT, KT naught, KT sigma naught probably uh, is beyond this. Uh, yield SYT already. Okay? Yeah. So, what happens is when you let, when you have this situation here, and when you let it go, remember what you call that? It's called strain strengthening, right? It's called strain strengthening. Okay? It doesn't break fracture, right? It's basically you have a strain strengthening here. Now, at the same time, you gotta also gotta be careful is, where 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 is this location? Only this location exceeds that mag the yield now, right? Uh, do I have this uh, uh, yield? Do I have a stress at here or here exceeding this uh, SYT? Maybe not. You see what I'm saying, right? So basically, because of the stress concentration, it does raise this stress at these two locations, or the, at this basically the point, the 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 location at here. To be beyond this SYT, what it causes it causes so-called local yielding, right? It causes this local yielding, and it causes local yielding. If you let it go, you have the local strain strengthening, right? Strain strengthening. Okay. So, but it doesn't mean that I will have I, I, I will have a yielding at this location and this location, which means at these two locations, actually they're still fine, right? They're still working perfectly okay. You know, there's no yielding, right? No yielding. So at these two locations, we can see that there's no general yielding. Okay? There's no general yielding. So this is the key point. No general yielding means no failure, all right? No failure. So if you, if you look, if you think in a practical sense, well, the parts still working okay. It's just at the location there is a little strain strengthening. That's fine, right? That's okay, okay? But if there is general yielding, no good, right? Yeah, there's there's deformation. There's there's a, uh, a permanent uh, deformation now, right? On the parts. Okay. However, brittle material is a different story, right? Different story. Brittle material, what happens is it, when it beyond this, you, what happens? It fractures, right? So if this is the thing here, it'll fracture, right? It'll fracture. So maybe it doesn't fracture here, here, but it fractures here. So yeah, that's a failure, right? So that's the reason when you uh, subject the material under static loading, 
you get you gotta look at it whether it's a productory or brittle material, and then uh, accordingly whether you want to use a KT or KTS or not. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at the, uh, an example at here, right? Yeah. Now uh, the example I give you at here, uh, the first example, you can try basically using uh, SOLIDWORKS to verify this theoretical calculation. Okay. So here is a geometry. Okay, here's the geometry here. Okay. There are two notches okay, at, uh, at this bar here. And uh, this is rectangular bar. The cross section of the rectangular is this dimension. Uh, let's see, suppose. <coughs> this is a D 100 millimeter. And uh, here's the thickness. 25 millimeter. Okay. Subject the bar with a force P and P equal to 4,000, no, 45,000 Newton. Okay, 45,000 Newton. So I'm not, I didn't see what the material is, but uh, that's okay. So let's just try to calculate Let's just calculate the stress or the maximum stress in the bar in the parts at here. Okay, maximum stress in the parts. So you might uh, you might think is okay if it's a ductile material, then you don't need to apply the uh, the KT, right? Yes, that's true. But uh, you you also need to realize is uh, even if you don't apply the KT KTS, you you still have the KT KTS over there, right? Yeah, so you still have this raised stress due to that uh, KT KTS. Okay, it's just that you don't use it for your failure analysis. Okay. So uh, what's this dimension here? R here. Yeah, R is 15 millimeter. Okay. So for this one here, we need to calculate this uh, nominal stress first. Uh, this is where you you also have to be careful here. Okay. A nominal stress, if there's no notch, it's calculated as a P over the cross section, right? Yeah. However, okay, there you you got to look at table A-15 in our textbook. Okay. Uh, the the table A-15 gives okay sigma naught calculations. Okay. So for this particular case, where's A15? You we look at this one here. This is A15 three. You see th this is a table. This is figure. That's exactly the kind of a uh, loading conditions and the notch. That's what we're looking at, right? So you use this figure. Uh, this called it W there, and I call it uh, a capital D. So that's okay, right? And uh, they uh, they use this small D here, which is the distance between the two notches, right? So I guess we need to calculate the small D because why? Because uh, they are ratios W over D is required. At the same time, you also need the ratio between R and a D, so that you can find the corresponding stress concentration factor KT, right? So let's calculate uh, this thing here. And the nominal, the sigma nominal is calculated as okay, your P over okay, in this case, okay, is calculated as as the the area at this sec at this location at here okay the cross section area at this location so which means uh, it's the thickness multiplied by 100 right this is 100 this uh, length set here minus what minus 2r right minus 2r that's all right yeah so basically this small d here is capital D minus 2r, okay, minus 2r. So that gives us 2r is 
a second here, wait a minute. Yeah, two R, right? Okay, well, I have a mistake in the lecture notes there. Two R would be thirty, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my lecture note is fifty. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now the bring a question if I got the right number there. So I have thirty six there, but anybody got a calculator you can try it maybe. Maybe that, that, would, that would not be 36 now. Okay. Now let's find the KT, right? Find the KT. So how do we find the KT? Okay. So we need W over D. In this case, basically, we need this capital D over small d. Capital D over small d is 0 0.5. Capital D is 100. Small d is... Oh... Sorry, what's going on here? Yeah, that value should be 25.7. 25.7, right? Oh, you know what? I was looking at the wrong location. Uh, yes, that's right. No, there's nothing wrong with the lectern. So I was looking at another one there. <laughs> 25.7, that's right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here is a W over small d, right? Here's W over small d, and uh, in our case, what do we need? We need basically what we need here. This is W over small d. In our case, it's a capital D over small d. So that's capital D over d minus two r. Okay, so this is approximately 1.43. We also need this r over d. So we also need this r over d. So the r over d is r over 2 minus d, d minus 2r. And this is approximately 0 0.21. Okay, 0 0.21. Yeah. So looking at this table, or looking at this figure, 0 0.21, it's pretty, this is 0 0.25, so in the middle is 0 0.225, and then middle of here is 0 0.2125, so it's pretty close, right? So somewhere here, okay? And uh, 0 1.43, there's no one. There's no 1.43. Your closest is 1.5 here. So if you draw something in here, so 1.4 maybe is a curve within 1.5 and 1.2. So what will be this approximate <coughs> KT here, right? It cannot be too far from this table, right? It cannot be too far. So you cannot see, hey, KT is 1.8, so that's a little bit too far. So this 1.8 in the middle is 2, right? So it's pretty close to 2, isn't it? Right? Pretty close to 2. I'll take as 2.0, right? Yeah. Was that okay? Yeah. So if you give me 1.9, that's okay. If you give me 1.95, then I'll question where's that 0.5 to 5 from, right? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> this doesn't have to be rocky science. So, okay. So once you get a KT, then your sigma is KT sigma naught. So that's just simple calculation. Fifty-one point four megapod. Okay. Okay, that's it. So if what you have here, instead of a notch, a geometry of a notch at here, if what you have here is a hole at here, right? And the diameter of the hole, let's say the diameter of the hole is D, okay, is D, then you cannot use this figure to find the KT anymore, right? And actually you're gonna use another one 
uh, which is this one. This is uh, 15 a 15-1. Okay, a 15-1 to find the corresponding kt. Okay, so this is actually simple. There's only one curve, so it just depends on the ratio between this d over w, right? So you can find kt. Okay, so so that's the different situation here. Is that good? Yeah. So at this stage, I would encourage you, I think in assignments, next assignments, there, there's going to be a little, probably bonus question you already. I would encourage you to verify the theoretical calculation of the stress with a very uh, common commercial uh, finite element analysis software, okay? To see the difference between their calculation and your calculation. Is that good? Okay. So actually, it's quite simple. Uh, this is what this is what I did. I can just roughly show you it here. Where is it? Not here. So this is what you what you what you can do, okay? You create okay a bar with a dimension, which is the same dimension as I illustrated in the previous example, okay? Yeah. Uh, really, the length doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter. It, it's uh, it's arbitrary, okay? As another cross section. And uh, you can apply the material as a brittle material. Actually, you, you can apply the material as either ductile material or or a brittle material. The software really doesn't matter. The software still give you the stress. Okay, the still software still give you the stress. So then, theoretical calculation of the pressure. Okay, so when you when you apply this loading condition, it's this: you fix one side. How many of you have done this before? Anybody? Yeah, some of you, right? Yeah. So you you fix one side, and uh, on the other side. There's a little trick here is you generally don't apply a force. Okay, don't apply force to the surface, you apply pressure to the surface. Okay? Because when you apply force, the force is acting on a point. Right? Yeah, so apply pressure. So this is basically why you need to calculate the pressure first based on the force. Right? Yeah. And then the rest of the thing here is just let it do the simulation. Okay, let's do the simulation. So then uh, you will end up with a sort of simulated results like this, right? So what's showing at here? So you can see default is more missile stress. Okay, more missile stress. So you might think, okay, so why is it not showing what no normal stress at here? It's actually because you are under pure uh, normal stress. So the, the more missile stress at here, uh, the calculation is the same as your normal stress. Okay, same as your normal stress. So you can look at the maximum value, which is the value over here, okay, and then compare to the value that you calculate theoretically. Okay, so there will be some difference. Okay, there will be some difference. Uh, and then what you can do is you can change the mesh around this location, okay, to a different kind of mesh around the other locations. So basically, you can apply a different kind of mesh around here, right? It's quite simple. There's a basically one option. Right click on it, apply the mesh control, change that uh, to a different uh, size, okay? So you already you change the smaller size of the mesh around here, and uh, that should give you a better results, okay, at, as uh, as previously. So you can see it's different now, right? It's different, okay? So this is the uh, the Software results 1.43 something, and uh, our theoretical calculation is 1.44. So it's pretty close. Okay, pretty close, right? Now, I have a video on the YouTube there, which is basically a torsional stress analysis. All right? Yeah. Uh, 
the the way to to conduct the torsional stress analysis is slightly different from this uh, uh, tension. Okay, so uh, <coughs> take a look at that video, and then at the same time take a look at this example set here. I did it exactly according to this dimension that here, right? And I also actually did a little design analysis basically design analysis given different radius here. Okay, given different radius, what will be the ch effect on the stress at here? So as a matter of fact, uh, maybe the, the uh, sort, of, sort of common sense is, uh, what happens when you have a smaller radius? Are you, are you going to expect to have larger stress or smaller stress at here? Larger, larger. larger right? Yeah. So that's the kind of the uh, design studies for. So take a look at that uh, uh, video as to how sh how should you carry out this one here. So anyhow, you you will end up with kind of a uh, distribution stress as the indicate. That's essentially the location of the fillet, right? The in the location fillet. So uh, those are simple ones. If you have a a larger structure, particularly in the future, if you have a uh, uh, feed, uh, civil civil engineer and you are not a mechanical, right? So if uh, uh, if you're dealing with a uh, um, let's see a larger structure, so generally you you are often in time you have to separate and looking at uh, local uh, distributions, right? So you can always basically uh, s uh, simplify the situation and uh, apply the loading accordingly. Okay, yeah. So any questions, right? So I encourage, I definitely, I strongly encourage you to do this because in your fourth year capstone design project, I've seen so many uh, cases that uh, later, sooner or later, you will uh, need this kind of uh, knowledge or you know uh, basic skills to do this. Yeah. So we 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 don't have the skill for you know, but we're basically using software. So the the skill at here is what I what I need you is often time I see is when you look at those results from the software. And you got to ask yourself, okay, where, how, how is that value calculated, right? Are you, do you trust the value? You know what I'm saying, right? So if you don't trust the value, how can I verify that value? Okay, so this is the difference here. And uh, give your first-year student, I can, you can teach them to do these things in 10 minutes, no problem at all, right? But uh, however, you know, the, the question is, where is that number from, right? How is that number calculated? And that's basically after this class, that's what you, you guys should know now. Okay, yeah. All good? Yeah, so try it out, okay? So, any questions? No? Okay, all good. I have a little exercise in the past. I, I did give it a quiz, but uh, this year I'm going to skip that. So, I'm gonna, but I'll, I'll post that little exercise on the uh, Blackboard, okay? Yeah. You mentioned that for, um, for ductile materials, we don't consider the case here. Under yes. static loading. Under that's static right. loading? Yeah. Um, no, I'm just kind of wondering, because like, I, I did some uh, pipeline work for yeah. a company. Yeah. And like typically, uh, like if we had to install like a branch or something on the pipeline, yeah. you'd have to do a calculation with, with the CSA code yeah. um, to make sure that there wasn't stresses at that area. And sometimes you'd have to weld on like a reinforcement pad around it. Sure. So would that... Like right away when you mentioned that, that's kind of what I thought of, right? Like, now uh, I didn't mention one. In the next one, we have a specific load. Okay. But when you have a specific load, we also have the stress concentration factor. So in that situation, specific load, we need to consider the stress concentration for both steps. Okay. okay. And that's going to be a deal to keep loading. Yes. Okay. However. For static loading, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say if your uh, if your structure or material are showing the, a brittle kind of fracture, then you, you probably still want to consider the stress So there are basically some depth of material that shows this. That's why I feel it's a brittle kind of fracture. Yeah, like if you get some hardening or whatever other cases. So over over here, we're sort of very strictly speaking. Adaptor, we're saying that the the strain 
the honey is more than 5%. Okay. Yeah, and then on the fruit material, that's when you consider E is less than 5%. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask you about that too. Like yeah. Where's the line between yeah, duck and yeah, 5%? Yeah, 5%. Okay. Um, and I was going to ask you about the temptile test specimens that we, that we did in the lab before too. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that where the, you know, where the fillet is, that's where the stress concentration is. Like yes. But when, when we were doing the, the test specimens there, like they were you know, radius down, right? They were neck down and, and they centered tight section and then they, you know, clamp it and oh. stretch it. Um, but if, if that's where the stress concentration is, then mm. like I would almost expect it to fail there instead of more in the middle, like they, like they do when you're doing the test. Good point, good point. So uh, your your tensile stress is on a, on a what on a um, just on a, on a bar yeah, yeah it's it's a very smooth bar right it's like what kind of bar do you use yeah like they just look like uh, like that and then they sort of so like that and yeah. Is that a brick material or a duct material? We did both. You did both? Yeah. yeah. But it's a duct material. I think, I can't totally remember. I think the brittle one seemed to feel like closer to the... But maybe, like, I don't know. The other thing is, uh, uh, also, yeah, you gotta look at it. It's pretty thin, right? Because the cross section area is more, much smaller than the cross section area here. So, yeah, you, you, you probably have a higher tensile strength. You know, you're exactly. Even if you're using a stress control. And then it might, would it depend too, like, on the on the radius of the yeah. structure for that cross right. too? And if it was really smooth or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. So I guess really it depends on the geometry of the bar. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. So let, let me clear the room in here. Yeah.